Hello, my cider friends. It's Jeremiah with the Hard Cider Hub. Today I'm going to show you how to use sulfur dioxide in your freshly squeezed, freshly pressed apple juice. I'm not going to call it cider until it's actually been fermenting. Okay, so what we're going to do, so I've gone and washed and sanitized all my equipment here, cleaned the table. I'm going to take my wine thief here and we're going to just grab a little bit of juice. There we go. And I'm going to add it to my cup. Just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot. The reason why we only need a little bit is the first thing we want to do is figure out what the pH is. And if you remember, I had mentioned that on my website, hardciderhub.com, that your pH is an inverse relationship with your acid levels. So I've got a pH strip here. You want to make sure that you're using the right ones. Definitely don't want to use soil. They won't work at all. Um, test strips I use here are 2.8 to 4.4. Um, they're made by Precision Labs. I like them. You know, if you're going to be doing a lot of cider, I'd say go ahead and get a digital pH tester. They're easier to use, um, and I think they're more accurate. So I'll definitely. These, you know, it's sometimes hard to read the range. All these supplies can be bought uh, on, on the website. So, got a little bit of juice here. Just gonna stick it in here for a couple seconds. Takes about 15 seconds to read. And grab the chart again. And typically speaking, you're supposed to check for them with a natural light or you need to go outside. And I'm going to actually do just a couple here because I found that these strips, for some reason, don't always give me the best reading. So I'll be right back. I'm going to run outside and check these in the light. Okay, these strips are showing about a 3.2. It's a little hard to read, but you can see they match up there. You just want to make sure it's the closest you can, you know. It'll be It'll be close to one of those five colors. Okay, so if we have a pH level 3.2, which is sort of on the lower scale, what does that mean? That means it can be relatively acid, this cider here. And, you know, it's a pretty good range. I like it, you know, anywhere between 3.2 and 3.8, I think is, is pretty good. So, uh, if you check out the fermentation time, uh, page on the website, you'll see that anything, any cider that's 3.0 to 3.3, you need one Camden tablet per, per gallon. If it's a 3.3 to a 3.5, you need two Camden tablets per, per gallon, or 3.5 to 3.8, you want three. Anything over 3.8, Add some acid because it's just it's your pH is way too high. It won't it won't make a good cider. So we know we need we're at a 3.2 uh, 3.6 range. So I'm gonna say you know that we need about two Camden tablets per gallon. It's a five gallon carboy. So what I'm gonna do is grab my Camden tablets, which I thought I had out. Here we go. Let me go ahead and. Take these here. So what we got five gallons of two, that's ten. So two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. I just go ahead and use something like this and go ahead and mash them up. You have them all mashed up. Once you have them all mashed up, you want to oh, I'm gonna take this out first, add all that juice back in. Mm. Yep. 
go ahead and dump it all in. And what I sometimes do is I'll stir it up using uh, this steel. Just, you know, stir it up like that, or I will oftentimes just go ahead and put the top back on it. Whoa! And just give it a good shake. I'd set it on the table and shake it, but I'll shake the heck out of the table and that's where the camera's at. So you can leave it on the table, just give it a good shake. You want to mix it all up. And that's pretty much it. That's adding the sulfur dioxide. Uh, kills off the yeasts that are in there, the natural yeast. And also kill off you know, your other nasties. Thank you much. Have a great day. Looking forward to trying it out.